What is going on BBN and welcome back to Kentucky Cavalry. I've taken an extended hiatus from posting on this channel primarily because my focus has been on growing my TikTok and Twitter accounts by being active over there. If you want more great Kentucky content and discussion, consider following me on those platforms. Today we will be discussing one of the most important aspects of next season's football team, the wide receiver room. Kentucky is losing practically all of its production from this year, with Wandale Robinson and Josh Ali moving on to the NFL. Even Kentucky's third option at wideout this year, Isaiah Epps, has left the program and transferred to Tulsa. With that being said, there is almost no production returning, and it's not going to be easy to replace those guys, especially Wandale Robinson. The good news is, Kentucky has been active in the transfer portal and the recruiting cycle and has landed a ton of talented wideouts who will fight to make an impact next year. Kentucky stud quarterback Will Levis will be returning to Kentucky next season, and I truly think we could see him make a jump to being an NFL-level quarterback. In his first season as a collegiate starting QB, Levis was absolutely incredible, showing off a massive skill set and putting up the best single season QB stats we've seen at Kentucky in a very long time. He had his issues and his mistakes, but I think he will be massively improved in year two of Liam Cohen's offensive system. The issue still remains though, who will he be throwing the ball to? The tight end position is locked down with plenty of star power. Keaton Upshaw will be back from his injury, and Justin Rigg can possibly elect to return for his sixth season of college football. Isaiah Cummings and Brendan Bates were both solid this past season as well, and I expect Isaiah to have a very productive upcoming year. As I mentioned, Kentucky is losing practically all of their receiver production. The leading returning wideout is Demarcus Harris, who caught 12 passes for 150 yards and one touchdown this year. I expect Harris to be a decent contributor for this offense, but we need a lot more if we're going to have a good season. The first name in this receiver room is Tavion Robinson. Robinson spent most of his college career at Virginia Tech, where he was a focal point in their offense. He has over 1,500 career yards as a receiver and is a talented kick returner as well. The expectation is that Tavion will replace a good bit of Wandell Robinson's production, as Tavion is a speedy, shifty slot receiver who specializes in making plays in the open field. He wasn't utilized nearly enough at Virginia Tech, as they struggled with the pass game. His story is similar to Juan Dale's from a year ago, a talented receiver who wasn't given the proper opportunities at their previous school. I expect Tavion to be heavily featured in this offense. Next up we have Alabama transfer Javon Baker. Baker is a former 4 star top 200 recruit who actually saw playing time at Alabama. He was a top 20 player at the wide receiver position in his recruiting class. He wasn't a massive contributor for Alabama, but it's hard to see the field when you have four NFL wide receivers playing ahead of you. I truly think Baker would have eventually been a big time player for Alabama, but he wants instant playing time and he'll get it at Kentucky. Baker is a freak athlete with top end speed and an insane vertical. He's got solid size and will likely be playing on the outside as a deep threat. Javon had 7 catches for 101 yards this season for the Crimson Tide, along with a touchdown catch. He picked Kentucky over some college football powerhouses, so it's obvious that he believes in this offensive system we have in place. Anytime Kentucky can pull in an Alabama level talent, I think we can be excited for him to wear the blue and white. Another guy we have to mention is Barryon Brown. Brown was a high four-star recruit out of Nashville, Tennessee. He picked Kentucky over Alabama. That's two receivers who could be playing football for Nick Saban at Alabama who are now going to be catching passes at Kentucky. There's obviously some guys on the roster who are talented and hoping to break out this season, but I think Barion is talented enough to get legitimate playing time as a true freshman. Brown is incredibly fast and actually holds state records in track. He's shifty as well, using a combination of strength and agility to make crazy plays on the field. If there's any player I can compare him to, it's Lynn Bowden. He plays like Bowden, he has a similar build to Bowden, he even played Wildcat QB in high school like Bowden did. I think we can expect great things from Barion Brown. There's a couple experienced guys who I think will be solid rotational receivers who we can trust to sub in and make a couple plays. The previously mentioned Demarcus Harris showed some legitimate signs toward the end of the year, and I find him to be a pretty reliable target. He isn't insanely talented and nothing particularly stands out about his game, but he's a solid and experienced option. Another experienced player in this room is Clevan Thomas. Thomas was looking great in the preseason before tearing his ACL and missing the season. He's been around the program for a very long time and has shown flashes of excellence. I don't expect him to be a starter, but the staff trusts him and I think he brings some good things to the table. The rest of this receiving core is very up in the air, but there's a ton of talent there. Dekel Crowdis is a former 4-star, top 300 recruit. 
He was expected to contribute as a true freshman this season before an injury kept him out for the year. Chauncey Magwood was the only true freshman receiver to get any significant playing time this year, but the talent is there for him. It remains to be seen exactly what his skill set is, but I think he's going to play a good bit. Christian Lewis is a former four-star recruit as well, and the staff has had great things to say about him. He's more of a tall, lanky wideout with top-end speed, so I could see him contributing as an outside threat in this upcoming season. Dane Key was a four-star recruit in this year's recruiting class. He will be a true freshman next season, but I think we might see him make a couple of appearances. He's a solid route runner and has great hands, but he might be more of a developmental piece for this wideout room. There's guys here who are absolute speed demons as well. Tay Tay Crooms has been here for three seasons and still hasn't caught a pass, but apparently is one of the fastest players on the team. It's unknown if he'll ever make an impact for this team, but we'll see. Incoming true freshmen Jordan Anthony and Brandon White are a pair of undersized receivers, but are blazing fast. They'll likely take a couple years to develop before seeing the field, but it's worth noting that they're there. So there we go, that's my analysis on our wide receiver room and who we can expect to make an impact. Let me know in the comments who you think could make an impact on this team. There is an abundance of talent at this position, and the only issue is that we just don't know who is going to break out and be the biggest contributors. With all this talent, a few are bound to be incredible players, so we'll have to just wait and see who. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Go Big Blue.